Hi everybody, this is Zach Andrews, and today we're going to be going over the behind-the-scenes Photoshop tutorial of how I did the um, editing process on my latest photo of my girlfriend in the water. Alright, so what I did was I brought in my RAW file into Camera Raw, and um, what I do in Camera Raw mostly is um, kind of play with these sliders a little bit and make sure that I have the image looking exactly how I want it before I actually get it into Photoshop. Um, you can really correct things like exposure, white balance very easily and in a very controlled way. Alright, that looks about right. A little bit of sharpening ever hurt. And let's see, some other things that I like to do is play up some of the colors that naturally are there but may not have come through in the photograph. And so sometimes you can change the hues of just specific colors to kind of make the blues um, or greens pop out a little bit more because sometimes they yellow off or kind of gray off some. So um, I like that. We're going to open that up into Photoshop now. And there we go. All right. The first thing I mainly do is duplicate the background layer. So I always have that to go off of. Now, some people like to um, use adjustment layers, but this is just kind of how I've developed the workflow. So first things first, do a little bit of levels to just increase some of the blacks there. That looks good. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is airbrushing the face and body there to get the skin to be as smooth as possible. So what you want to do here is uh, I always zoom in just so I get really in there so strokes don't have to be so tiny. And then I'm going to go grab my brush tool. And once I get my brush tool here, I'm going to make sure that the opacity is pretty low up there, um, about 17%. And then essentially what you do is you just sample a little bit of the color around the face and then basically paint over the face um, with that color and the key here is to keep resampling and resizing the uh, brush so that it doesn't get very blotchy it's easy to um, kind of make this look really blotchy if you use uh, a minim minimal colors around the face so I always resample every single time I move to a different area of the face the other thing I forgot to mention was that I'm using a very very soft brush here um, soft meaning that it's it's not um, hard edged and that it blends really well with the other colors on the face. Um, that way, you know, when you kind of go over similar parts, it's kind of creating nice natural gradients of color along the face. Now, it's easy to overdo this and kind of make the person look plastic. So remember, do this kind of in moderation. Don't overdo it unless you're going for that mannequin look. Then you can do it. Alright, so there's not really much more to this technique, so you guys get to watch this in high speed um, while I finish up the rest of the picture. Okay, pause here for a sec. Uh, sometimes you might run across this where you get little tiny blemishes on the skin, and so what I use to get rid of those is the patch tool. Um, basically make the selection and then use another part of the face to cover it up. Pretty simple. Uh, there's a bunch of other different things you can do, like with a band-aid spot healing tool, but this is just my uh, healer brush thing of choice. So, And I think we're good. So, before and after. Alright, so now that I'm done with the airbrushing, I'm going to duplicate the airbrushing layer and then I'm going to do something called burning and dodging on it. I'm going to start with my burning tool and I'm going to make sure that my range is set to mid-tones, that I'm burning in the mid-tones. Um, you can find that in the top left corner under the range menu. And then I'm making sure that my exposure is pretty low, probably around 5%. But basically what I'm doing here is going over all the darker parts of the picture to kind of sculpt the face bring out the darker parts of the picture to really make the, the photo pop and really give it some depth. Um, so I'm going to go over you know, the bridge of the nose, um, the makeup in the face. What you don't want to do is make the subject look like they have black eyes. Um, and that's pretty easy to do if you kind of just do a general sweep over the eyes. It kind of makes the eyes look sunken in. And So you want to go over um, appealing parts of the face and, re and really kind of define it more rather than just um, kind of just make it look beat up. Uh, pretty straightforward method. Um, we're going to fast forward here. Alright, and I think that's about it. Before and after. Before and after. So you see how that definitely gives the face depth. Alright, so we're going to do the opposite of burning, which is dodging. 
and that is essentially just lightening up parts of the picture. Um, and again, I'm using a big soft brush, uh, where the range is mid-tones and exposure set to about 6%. And again, we're just going to kind of accentuate those lighter parts of the face and even give it even more depth. What really makes a picture pop is when you go dark with the darks and light with the lights. And so we're doing that in a very controlled way. I'm choosing what parts of the face I want to actually lighten up to give it all that more depth. Okay, fast forward. All right, so before, well, before and after. Pretty big difference. Um, it definitely helps the picture give it that pop look. All right, last thing I do to my pictures is I put on a gradient map, which kind of gives it that final touch there. Um, I'm gonna choose a purple and pan gradient to give it kind of some purple undertones and kind of play up the skin tones a little bit. I'm gonna lower the opacity if I need to to about 60-70% um, just so it's not super harsh. I'm checking my uh, other um, other picture here to see if it's gonna flow together and it looks looks about right. And that's before and after. Definitely gives it a more of a cinematic kind of analogous color scheme that really makes it pop a little bit more. And there you have it. That's essentially all I do to my photographs, um, at least for this one. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed watching, and uh, if you guys want to check out the actual behind-the-scenes video of this photograph, you can see it at uh, vimeo.com slash I am Zach